If you want to experience spring at its busiest and best, then it has to be done in one of our native woodlands. Everywhere you turn, the flora and fauna is bursting into life. But if you've ever tried to capture any of that in a photo, well, you might have been disappointed. It's certainly not as easy as you think. David Plummer used to be a policeman, but now earns his living by photographing wildlife. Three years ago, he bought 10 acres of ancient woodland in which to perfect his craft. So that, for example, I think, you know, it's all right, but it's a bit... I think you've tried to capture everything yeah. in one shot. Personally, I try and hone in the viewer's eye to a certain area. So I was just using that oak tree as a, a frame to the right-hand side of my shot. The blurred bluebells in the background certainly creates the impression that there's thousands of bluebells here. I see. How can you tell that this is ancient woodland? Uh, initially, you can look at the trees, but there's lots of flower species that are ancient woodland indicator plants. I mean, look at around us now, the amount of bluebells. It takes a huge amount of time for them to become established, so they're only going to be present in ancient woodland. Other indicator plants of woodland that's at least 400 years old include wild garlic, yellow archangel and dog violet, all of which flower in spring. This place is obviously absolutely bursting into life at this time of year. Visually it's at its most beautiful, but I think the more you look for things, the more photographic subjects there are to find here. Ancient woodland is one of the most diverse habitats in Britain. Having got to know this environment well, David has learned a few tricks for photographing woodland birds. A really dynamic, iconic bird of this woodland is a great spotted woodpecker, yeah. and it's a really tough bird to photograph. So what I've done is I've used their natural feeding behaviour of feeding on the sides of trees and, and branches, and, and I've drilled holes in the side, and what I do is I just lace that with lard. Uh, it doesn't clog their feathers, it's a very rich source of food. See, now some people would say that's cheating. It's adapting their natural behaviour. And I, I can see you set up this feeding station, you've got niger seeds which suggests goldfinches. Goldfinches are certainly a speciality. We don't want goldfinches on feeders because it's boring photographs. Right. So what we do, we take some niger seed and we just lace Cunning. the tops of the teasels. By using simple techniques that anyone can try in their own garden, David ensures he gets his birds just where he wants them. Okay, you've got goldfinch on the feeder now, Jamie. There's two, on there. two on there. There, it's on the teasel now, right hand teasel. Have you got it? Oh, look at that. Oh, great. Excellent. Woodpeckers in. Right hand log, but look at that. Look at that bird. Gently with the lens, weight's going to come round to the left. Oh. Look at that. Th these guys what they eat normally. Larvae or grubs under the bark of the tree, and so they'll sort of pull the bark off. And they've actually got a harpoon tongue, ah. so they'll harpoon the grub in under the bark. That's just amazing. You know, to see them so close as well, you realise they're actually a really big bird. I was a bit worried of having been given the most amazing opportunity to take photos that I might stuff it up, but actually, I think that's a bit of a cracker. Well done. <laughs> What's your favourite time of year here? I still think it's, it's this time of year. I think it's fantastic. But moving into autumn, we get that shifting colour with the fungi and the golden leaves. It's bittersweet autumn because obviously you're leading into winter. But then when you get a bit of snow and you've got robins coming to the feeders, Again, that's magical, and then that cycles round to spring. And I, I think a lot of the beauty here is transient. It changes all the time, and that's what makes it all the more poignant. And those bluebells we saw this morning will not last. In five days, they'll be gone, which is what makes it more beautiful. Visiting these woods with David really has shown me that if you take the time to examine the relationships between the flora and the fauna in, in an environment like this, you can really benefit when it comes to photographing the very best of British woodlands.